More lazy leaderboard mess-ups from Scopely, and will this be the first month that highly engaged players won't be able to complete the month-long milestone event? We're going to talk about both of these issues, and we're going to get the mail back to answer your questions in this video. And if you're ready for all of that, then you know to do Valley Club. Find that like button, and let's go smash it! And welcome back to the Valley Flying channel. I am Valley Flying, and I hope you're having a great day. In this video, we are answering your questions from the mailbag and talking about two main issues going on right now with the community. One is the end of Sword Satellite, how the ties were handled on that, and the other is Seeing Red, the month-long milestone event. Highly engaged players potentially won't be able to finish all the milestone events for this month. What can Scopely do? We're going to talk about both of these things and your mailbag questions in this video. But before we get to all that, if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button for more great Marvel Strike Force content. At least five Marvel Strike Force videos per week on this channel. Question and answer videos like this, reveal videos, news videos, everything to help your experience in Marvel Strike Force. But let's go right into the game and talk about Sword Satellite, how this ended. So, has some rewards pretty good rewards these ranking rewards at the end uh top 10,000 could have gotten diamonds for uh nokia diamonds for black panther or at least that's how it was supposed to work uh because as we look at these leaderboard i was just happy to get these uh rewards here for the top 5,000. but i was very very close to this as i got a message this morning from a lot of other players how these highs were handled and i know that i was not one of the last to complete this because i did this very early in the morning and i still saw the scores coming in so yeah uh what was supposed to happen or what was uh or what they said would happen the first players to get these scores would be at the top of the ranking so that's how ties would be handled that was not the case and i know firsthand that's not what the case was because i was second to last with this same score if we go all the way to the top of where the rankings were uh all the way at this 1043 ranking is still or that exact same score is right there and i got a message from mr hartgrave who is uh, right next to my ranking here right there same exact score he said this score went up 500 places i haven't seen screenshots to verify that but yeah scopely what is happening here also got the same kind of responses from reddit here what a disappointment for scopely scored satellite rewards were delivered they didn't even give a damn about the ties 1046 which is the exact same score i was the same score as the person won 996 uh points there so that is what it said there uh we had the same points kill the same room same characters what's the difference of score i uh the fail the game listed me as 1046 and i'm running the exact same problem there i didn't know this was an issue i was like i said i was happy to get the top 5,000, but yeah the way this was handled leaves a bad taste in a lot of players mouth blogbuster announced they're releasing a blitz event to grant red letter day progress of the milestone points that eliminates ties and it does it's supposed to eliminate ties for the event but not the actual sword satellite here yeah those wasn't a mechanic to do anything with sword satellite other issues here that players had what's the point of one to five percent this person got ranked 10,025 or 235, but received six to 10 rank rewards. What's the point of rank one to 5% if they're inside the top 10,000? So this this has happened a lot of times with these events. There's not a enough players that I guess they thought would be in this event. So yeah, right outside the top 10,000, you know, if you look at these rewards, should have gotten the next reward, but this was not even met. I guess not enough players qualified for this. And I guess some of the problem with this, you needed five star characters even to get to this. So not a, not a lot of players were able to participate in all this stuff here. So we'll see what they do with this, what they do with these ties. But the other thing that players are having issues with, and this is what I ran into, uh, the Seeing Red event completed everything, got all the points from the web and everything. Now, I did miss one day of the free claims. That was 4,800 points. So if I got that, I would have had this. But there's a lot of players that are way shorter than me that are like one point short. So, yeah, this was a miscalculation. Decibel point, Jeff, wasn't helping out the players. The evil head of math guy Melvin was rearing his ugly head and gave us this bad event my question is scopely was this bad design was this uh, lazy design or was this something worse that you're trying to get more money recoup some of the money from the players of all the errors that it went on these past few months and trying to recoup some of the compensation that was given out let's go to reddit and see what they are saying because we are not the only one short here 
All right, on Reddit, anyone else seeing Reddit over the inability to hit the last monthly milestones? The most difficult thing about Marvel Strike Force is determining whether Scopely purposely screws their players or just incompetent. Maybe it's both, and I think it is both, and I think that sometimes they want some of this money. I think a lot of it is incompetence, though. Some of that is because this month-long milestone events only had four events, and I think they uh, miscalculated this totally. I'm not sure why. They knew this was only going to be four of these main events, four of these main, actually three of these main events. The Valentine's card, the Cupid bow, and then the Tulip bouquet. That was all we had, and then we needed to get all these symbiote vials. They obviously did not uh, factor in that there's only three events in this. And uh, yeah, not a lot of players are getting all this currency. But that also goes back to what we have last month, where with the ranking rewards for the main milestone event, players that normally finish in the top 1% were getting 3 to 10% in the main milestone rewards. So something is going on with this. Maybe they're getting uh, holding back on some of these rewards because of some of the compensation that they have to give out from some of their errors. I know that is a uh, tinfoil hat theory that a lot of players have. Let me know what your thoughts on it are. But yeah, let, let me know what you think they're going to do to compensate for this because usually their intentional design for this is that engaged players are going to get a little bit of leeway to do all these events some players are much more short uh this person this player's eight thousand point shorts from the final milestone this player normally finishes in the top three percent for all of these milestones so yeah a lot of players are short much more players short this player's short by 2470 so Scopely, your math was off at this many players were short. What are you going to do? And what are you going to do to handle ties in the future? Because it was supposed to be first player that gets these scores, gets uh, gets this points in the Sword Satellite. But that is obviously not the case. As we move forward with the first question of the week, this one from Twitter. Normally, I don't take them from other sources other than Discord, just because I like to keep them all in the same place. But this is related to the same topic. Ali Fine, Mobile Gamer, is Scopely really serious about not allowing us to reach Milestone 40? I hope not. There's been some serious miscalculations in their event this month. This, uh, you're about 13,000 points short. Yeah, this uh, there's some serious miscalculations this month. Moving forward to the rest of the questions on Discord, though. I have an out of time team question. In fact, a couple. What are the best T4s for out of time and why are we working on them? Other than a legendary, if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be working on Black Knight and out of time we'd be shovelable just I mean, like most raid teams that I haven't even worked on because of level cap increase. All right, so a little different. So they are a war team. So if you are serious about war, this would be a very good team for you. They're gonna be able to take out a lot when they're fully completed, fully in the game. They're not into war. Well, Black Knight does have some value. Black Knight is uh, valuable anywhere you're gonna use them. Has that arena meta uh, value and is involved in arena meta right now. You could also use him in war, also used in Cosmic Crucible. So Black Knight's a little different. Starbrand and Ghost Rider, well, those characters are specific to out of time. I don't think they're gonna get a lot of value outside of the out of time team and outside of war. As far as T4s though, well, uh, Captain Carter already did a lot of his T, uh, her T4s a while ago. Just taking a look at a few of them, I think this one is going to be good at reviving a dead out of time or uh, rebirth ally, 60% base health. I think this is a strong T4 her special. This is also a strong T4. There's three turn cooldown, so getting 100% extra damage every time, every third turn is good. Safeguard to two turns to rebirth allies and raids. That's good, but you're not really getting an effect from the out of time. And usually the passes are pretty good in raids. Yeah, no, this is not a good passive. All right, next is Black Knight. I would do all of these. I did all of these because this is an arena character. And arena characters, I think you do all the T4s. Take a look at Star Brand. His best one I've already done it is going to be the passive. Spawn immunity to self and all out of time allies. So it's a that affects the entire team. This is a good one. We also have this special here, reducing speed bar by 15% for all secondary attacks. So yes, reducing speed bar of all enemies is gonna help as well and uh yes you're getting more damage and again getting a second stun with this ultimate so i think those are the ones you do at star brand taking a look at cosmic ghost rider and the best t4s for cosmic ghost rider well if we go down here this ultimate is a great one gives trauma to the primary target and it gives clear battlefield effects on the enemy side so that's a good one as well this one, this passive affects him, gives him more barrier, more focus. That's going to be great for Cosmic Ghost Rider, but doesn't affect the entire team. And this one, if they have Manny's Protector with the highest speed, defense down, and trauma to that character. I think the best one is going to be the ultimate. If you're really starved for T4s, you can probably skip a few of those. And last but not least, going back to Captain America, 
done a lot of these in the past you've gotten many mana reworks and his value's been up and down in the over the course of the game uh this passive is usually pretty good gaining a taunt for two turns when a rebirth or out of time team uh, member drops below 50 percent health more block amount for himself and this one is usually pretty good as well clearing negative effects from self generating more ability energy and uh yeah that's a great one as well so uh they are great for war they're gonna be needed if you want that legendary unlock but black knight is a little different some of these other characters if you don't need the legendary aren't into war you don't need to build them but black knight i think you build them as as big as you can brother greetings mr flying since the return about a month ago i've been able to play dark dimension 4 twice Get Dr. Doom to gear tier 16. Nice. Congratulations, brother. Been doing the same for the secret defenders as you suggested. Working on the war scourge. Having a hard time with the skill nodes at the end to get the last two milestones. Who would you recommend? My best skill characters right now are the gear tier 16, Corvus Glaive, and Proxima Midnight, the Secret Avengers, Nick Fury, and a four-star Kestrel. All right, so right off the bat, Kestrel, Nick Fury, you're going to use those still in the end game, so build those up. Let's go take a look at the rest of the skill characters, though. All right, and we look in the game. We already talked about Kestrel, very, very good. Nick Fury, very good. You're going to use both of them still at the end game. Black Knight, we talked about. This character might be harder to gain access to. You would have had to complete a lot of floors in the Sword Satellite. But if you do have access to uh, building up this character, farming this character, uh, build him up. Uh, this may not be farmable right away because this is a dark promo character. And they didn't commit that dark promo characters would be farmable in that same cadence as normal characters. So you may be out of luck with Black Knight. But other characters that you may want to build up. Raven the Hunter is great. They did say that he should be farmable later this week. So not farmable as of me recording this, but should be farmable by the end of this week. That could be a great third character for you. Shang-Chi is a great plug and play character. Even all these years later, still has some plug and play value in Cosmic Crucible. And I, I think uh, the Heroes for Hire are beaten pretty easily in war, but I, you know, he's used all the time in here with Heroes for Hire. Other options that you can go, you can build into these new Avengers here, and I've kind of done that for the race to the 100 milestone just to get certain characters up to 100. You can lean into these characters. They're both farmable. Uh, the best value for that particular node, though, is these secret defenders or these secret Avengers are going to be pretty good. Captain Sam is pretty good. Uh, Maria is pretty good. Sharon Carter is pretty good. And they may help you in that particular node, that skill node that you're having trouble with. But just realize towards the end game, you're not going to use these characters too much anymore. So uh, new Avengers might be the way to go. Also, Infinity Watch. Now, there are more counters to them in Crucible and in War. Their, their value is kind of uh, going down, but their, their value has been there for this long. So you may want to continue to lean into Infinity Watch. That immunity and safeguard that they spawn with is still going to be a problem for a lot of teams. So Gamora and Moon Dragon are two characters that you may want to lean into. Uh, so you got a lot of options there. Definitely continue to go with Kestrel and Nick Fury. Probably not leading into the Black Order. As you can see, They I don't have them built very big at the end game. So they might help you right now. But again, not uh, going to help you too much in the end game. And last but not least, have you heard him discuss how many club people are close to finishing the monthly milestone? Because this hurts. And if we look at this screenshot, this is even worse than mine. It's only short less than a thousand points for this. Come on, Scopely, make this right. This is not a good decision. This is not a great way to lean into your sixth anniversary, Scopely. So hopefully we have more points coming. More compensation is coming to make this right. I think this calculations weren't done correctly because there's only three main milestone events. Usually there's more. But hopefully there's some compensation coming and everything is good in the world. But that is it for right now. There should be another video coming out later today. And hopefully this video did provide you some value. If it did, leave it a like. It is free for you and it helps out the channel a lot. If you want to check out what are the best teams to farm right now in Marvel Strike Force, check out the video up there and I'll see you guys next time. Have a great rest of your day. Oak Fist Bump Valley flying out.